Okay, in today's lesson, section 4.2, we're going to talk about the six trigonometric functions of acute angles. I know what you're thinking already, six. Um, I know three, you know, probably everybody in here from either an Algebra 1 course or geometry are familiar with the three, uh, the sine, the cosine, and the tangent. Uh, we're going to introduce you to three other ones today, so we have six. Um, we won't introduce you to more later, there's just going to be these six. Um, so we're going to solve some problems with those six trig definitions, those six trig functions. We're going to look at solving some right triangles and we'll do some application problems as well using the, the trig functions uh, to solve some word problems. Okay, so first, what are the six trigonometric functions uh, that we're going to use? Uh, well, let's start with the three that you know. Uh, they are sine cosine and tangent. Um, these definitions are, are based off of an acute angle which is placed inside of a right triangle. Um, I am going off that you've probably seen this and you know some of this already, um, but the three sides of a right triangle are the hypotenuse being the longest side. It's also the side it's across from the right angle. Um, the other two sides are labeled based on your reference angle here, the, the angle theta. Um, one side is opposite of that angle, across from it, and the other one is adjacent to that angle, and adjacent means right next to it. So we have an opposite, an adjacent, and a hypotenuse. Those three sides of a right triangle. Uh, the sine, abbreviated S-I-N, sine of angle theta is equal to the length opposite divided by the hypotenuse length. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. The cosine, abbreviated COS, is equal to the length adjacent divided by hypotenuse. And the tangent, abbreviated TAN, is equal to the length opposite divided by the length adjacent. So these three, I'd be willing to wager many of you already know or at least have seen before. Um, that shouldn't be a stretch to say that you've probably seen those before. Uh, the other three are new ones. Um, but they're just the reciprocals of the three that we have here. So there's not a lot to learn if we just realize they're reciprocals. We're almost got to learn more learn their names and which ones are the reciprocals of what to, to get it. There are, um, the first one, I'll write out the word, the, the function, and then the abbreviation uh, uh, like above. There is cosecant. Is it abbreviated CSC? The cosecant of an angle theta is equal to the hypotenuse divided by opposite. It's just sines reciprocal. The next one is secant, abbreviated SEC. It is the hypotenuse divided by the adjacent. So it's just cosines reciprocal. And the last one, oops. It's cotangent, abbreviated C-O-T. It is the adjacent divided by the opposite. It's the reciprocal of tangent. So here's your three new ones. Cosecant, secant, cotangent. They are just sine, cosine, and tangents reciprocals, respectively. Okay, first example problem. Find the value of the six trigonometric functions for the angle theta for the right triangle with given sides. So a three, four, five right triangle, uh, my angle theta. I'm gonna go ahead and label the sides. I don't always do it in practice, but, it, but it's a good practice as you learn. Uh, the five is the hypotenuse. It's the longest side, which makes it the hypotenuse. It's also across from the right angle. Um, the four and the three, the four is the opposite because it's crossed from the angle, the three is the adjacent as it's right next to the angle. Um, so I want 
sine of theta, cosine of theta, tan theta. I also want cosecant, secant, and cotangent. And I usually set them up like this, that I have the, the three reciprocals um, directly opposite of the three original ones that we all know, um, just kind of matched up identically. Um, so sine, I start with sine, it's the opposite over the hypotenuse, so it is four-fifths. Cosine, it's the adjacent over hypotenuse, so three-fifths. And the tangent, it's the opposite over adjacent, four-thirds. Now on the cosecant, secant, and cotangent, you can memorize the hypotenuse over opposite, hypotenuse over adjacent. You can memorize those definitions, or you can know the, just the fact that these three are the reciprocals of these. So if I have sine is four-fifths, cosecant is simply five-fourths. Secant is cosine's reciprocal, so it's five-thirds. Cotangent is tangent's reciprocal, so it's three-fourths. And I've got all six trig functions. Okay, this next example, when you look at it, um, it's essentially the same problem, same exact directions. Find the value of the six trigonometric functions for the angle theta for the right triangle with given sides. Uh, what's different about it from the last example is not all the sides are given. We have two of the three sides. We're missing the third side. Um, I can't, you know, I have the hypotenuse I have the adjacent, um, I'm missing the opposite. Uh, there are four of the six trig function ratios that use opposite. I cannot write those four unless I find the opposite first. So that becomes the first task, is let's find this length. And to do that, we're gonna use Pythagorean's theorem. The a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Uh, the 11 is the c because it's the hypotenuse. Uh, the other two can be the A or the B respectively, it doesn't matter. So maybe I'm looking for the A, I have the B, and we solve this. So we get A squared plus 64 equals 121. I need 121 minus 64. So A squared is 57, so A is the square root of 57. Now, no decimals, um, so let's all agree to that, no decimals. Uh, if the radical could simplify, I would do that, but 57 is only 19 times 3, and those are both prime, so nothing comes out of 57, so we're just going to leave it as it is. Um, but I'm ready to begin now. I've, I can now write out the sine, cosine, and tangent. So let's see, the sine is opposite. over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and then the tangent is opposite over adjacent. Now I need the reciprocals, which are cosecant, secant, and cotangent. Um, let's talk about cosecant first, and I'm gonna do some scratch work down here and then just put my final answer up. So cosecant I know is the reciprocal of sine. So make it 11 over square root of 57. Um, let's make it a point uh, in this course for the time being to rationalize any radicals that we have. Um, so I'd multiply top and bottom by square root of 57, give me 11 square root of 57 over 57. Okay, uh, secant is simple, it's just 11 eighths. Cotangent, I do the same work to flip this over. The cotangent is eight divided by square root of 57. I multiply that square root of 57 up and end up with eight square root of 57 over 57. There's all six of my trig function values.
Okay, next example. Assume that theta is an acute angle in a right triangle. Okay, let's draw that. There we go. Theta is an acute angle in a right triangle. Evaluate the remaining trig function values. So, um, I'm after sine, cosine I already have, I need tangent, I need the reciprocals, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. Secant, I can get it by just reciprocating cosine. So I've got one of the five. Uh, the other four I can't get unless I can solve the triangle first, set up the triangle. Well, cosine is the adjacent divided by hypotenuse. So let's label it that way. Adjacent hypotenuse. Now this problem sets up similar to the last one in that I need the opposite. If I could find the opposite, then I could use it for the other four trig functions. So to find the opposite, we're going to use Pythagorean's theorem. We're going to do like an a squared plus 5 squared equals 11 squared. So a squared is equal to, I want 121 minus 25, which is 96. Uh, let's see, 96 divides by 16. So when I get to the square root of 96, that is... Um, 16 times 6, so that is 4 square root of 6. Okay. Now I have my opposite. And with the opposite, I can now finish. Uh, so sine is the opposite over hypotenuse. Tangent is the opposite over adjacent. Now I need to reciprocate these. Uh, let's kind of show that scratch work here. If I reciprocal the sine, I get 11 over 4 square root of 6. I'm going to multiply top and bottom by square root of 6, which gives 11 square root of 6 over 24. These two become just 6, and 4 times 6 is 24. Okay, I need to do the same thing to this one. I need to reciprocate this, uh, which is going to make it 5 square root of 6 over 24. I'll let you practice the same work, though, if you need to.